What you will learn in this video specifically is about the memory hierarchy, what types of memory is there, and why you should care about the memory management in general. When you start programming your application, sometimes when you feel that your application is sluggish and doesn't live up to the expectation as a performance that you had from your application, most likely you have mismanaged the memory inside your application. There are different types of memory if you think about the memories in general you can imagine the pyramid shape as called memory hierarchy on the top of the pyramid there are registers uh, which basically located in the CPU and the CPU has the fastest way to access those these are really tiny memory that's why we put it on the top of the pyramid on the next level we have cache the cache is also tiny it's a bit bigger than registers of course it's uh, it's also fast in today's CPU you heard layer 1 layer 2 layer 3 caches these are basically the layers from the layer 1 which has the tiniest size compared to the other layers but the uh, speed is faster than other layers and you go to the down to the layer 3 in the middle part of the pyramid we have RAM or random access memory this part of the memory is also temporarily like cache and registers but it has a bigger size than these two uh, faster than the storage which lives on the bottom of it but it's uh, slower than the cache and registers which uh, enables the programs to put bigger chunk of the data into this place which helps this data be accessible to the CPU in on the bottom of the pyramid we have a storage a storage is the place for the data to live there longer than any other part of the memory type but it is the slowest part of the memory hierarchy if i want to give you a rough number this can be also a bit different based on the system that you have but if you can manage your data to sit in the cache or in registers especially when we are talking about the bigger size of the data if you can put them in the cache it would be 100 times faster than the RAM and if your data is in storage it would be much slower than the RAM itself if I want to give an example imagine that you want to read a book when you read a book you tend to read a book sequentially because it's uh, already managed in that way so you see the page numbers you start reading the book which the sequential aspect of the book helps you to understand the book better and also to finish the book faster compare this scenario to the book which has the random placement of the page numbers so if you want to start with the page one you need to jump around the book to find an, the next page and come back to the at another page it really takes time for you to finish the book compared to the sequential this is exactly how you need to manage your data inside the memory here if you can manage your data to be located in registers it would be much faster than the cache and it would be much faster than the ram if you can modify your program to put the data inside the cache as a next step let's talk about how cpu interacts with the memory cpu uses something like memory addresses in order to find the location of the data imagine an array of the data each element of this array in this case imagine array of numbers is located in a specific memory address and cpu will fetch each element based on this memory address but here's the catch fetching the data from memory is not instantaneous it takes time which the delay called latency registers are so fast the data from registers can be fetched by one cycle of the cpu which means the lowest latency in the memory here cache is also fast but if you compare ram to the cache it takes hundreds of cpu cycles in order to fetch data from ram compared to the cache and if you go all the way to the storage of course it takes much more time than ram another key factor is bandwidth the amount of data that can be transferred per second called bandwidth faster bandwidth means that more data can be fetched in the unit of time together latency and bandwidth can decide how fast the data can be accessible for the cpu this is where the cache comes into the place if the cpu can 
hit the data or can fetch the data from the cache, we call it cache hit and it's super fast. But if the data is not in the cache, it's called the cache miss. And in a specific case of the cache miss, CPU needs to call RAM in order to fetch data from the RAM. Modern CPUs, they have predictive algorithm which enables the CPU to predict what kind of data needs to be available for CPU, specifically needs to be available in cache in order to make the data fetching for CPU faster, which is called prefetching. This basically helps CPU or memory management to be more in a predictive way, even when the programmer doesn't write the program in an efficient way. So why does this all matter for you as a programmer? The way that you structure your code, it indicates how efficiently it will use the memory. For example, accessing data sequentially in case of array of elements, which means that reading the data element by element is much faster than random access in this case. That's because sequential access takes advantage of a spatial locality, which means that the addresses in the element of the array, they are adjacent in the memory location to each other. Random access on the other side have cache misses which means that you have higher latency in your program here is another quick example imagine a 2d array if you access 2d array row by row it's sequential and it's more efficient but if you jump from one column to another you will basically have potential cache misses which means that you use basically random access on the contrary of using sequential access understanding this kind of patterns basically helps you to improve your program in general the key takeaway from today's session is that if you manage your memory in your program, it doesn't mean that you save the space. It means that how you can make sure your data will be available for CPU to be fetched faster than before. So all in all, it's about saving time in your program or in your application in general. And in programming, time is everything. Let's wrap up this session. In the next video, we will talk about how variables and data structures use memory. I wish you good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and bye.